welcome back to my channel it's i'm in here and today's video is going to be another week in my life this is actually the third week that i've been trying to film this video and i just honestly have not had the energy to maintain vlogging every single day for a week and so this is my third time i got out my real camera this time i stopped using my cell phone stopped trying to be lazy it's still day one it's still monday but i'm trying and I think part of it was just the winter blues and now yesterday was um, the time change what do you call it? daylight savings the day that it ended or we sprang forward basically we sprang forward one hour and now it's 5 30 it's almost six o'clock it's still very sunny outside and I think naturally like I just have a boost of energy and also I have like um, vitamin D prescription pills because I'm so low on vitamin D as most people probably are in North America and those have been out for two months and I just couldn't get a hold of my doctor and it was just a whole thing but anyways I now have a prescription waiting for me to pick up I just feel motivated to you know start getting back into it start having energy start doing things on YouTube and so today's Monday like I said it is after work, I came back home and I had one patient today um, and my other patient, I had two originally scheduled, the other person wanted to reschedule, which is fine. Um, but I think I'm going to tell you about my patient cases at the end of the week um, on Saturday or Friday night because it's easier for me to kind of say everything in one go. So if you're interested to know what genetic counseling is, what kinds of things I see as a prenatal genetic counselor, keep on watching the video. But then I'll give you a bit of a day-to-day -day while I'm filming the vlog regularly. So today I am just hanging out, just chilling. I have about 45 minutes before I have virtual therapy, which I do bi-weekly. Talked about it multiple times on my channel before um, and so I'm just gonna chill until I have to meet with my therapist and that's pretty much it my room was clean I cleaned it this whole weekend but then this morning I had some difficulties picking an outfit and that's how we end up with piles of clothes that again I have no energy to ever clean but that's kind of the plan for today there is not really much of a plan which is good because I really like to spend my evenings doing nothing I have been watching Love is Blind and I try like not to jump onto bandwagons or anything but I finished all of season one in like a week or something like that and I don't want to start season two yet because again I know I'm going to watch it very quickly. If you have any show recommendations please leave them in the comments below. I prefer watching shows that are like 20 to 30 minutes per episode because and sometimes I can watch it during lunch and then I can finish a whole episode and not need to like spend an hour of my time watching it. So if you have any recommendations, please let me know. Anything that's on Netflix or anything on Prime, I can watch, I have access to. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do today and I'll check in with you later. You're always talking about leaving Milk cart and black and white face Smile baking for the picture Parents waiting in the driveway Thursday evening as you know and the pile of clothes behind me is getting bigger as the week goes on which is just my routine that's just how things work around here it was the most beautiful day outside today I think it went up to like 21 degrees or something like that like on my drive back home and like automatically I feel so so, so much better I feel like a completely different person I feel like I have so much energy so much lust for life in this moment 
I went for a walk during lunch, which is something that my coworkers and I um, do when the weather is nice. Like we've been doing that all of last year pretty much until it started snowing. And um, so we did that, it was very quick, like 20 minutes today. And then after work, I wasn't sure if I wanted to go to the gym or not. Um, but I convinced myself and I went and I had a little workout, wasn't too long, like 30 minutes. And then I came home and I ate dinner because I was very hungry. And now I'm going to take a shower because I'm quite sweaty. And that's about it. I finished Love is Blind. I finished the entire season two. And like, honestly, this week, I started it like on Monday or Tuesday, probably, I think. And I finished it all. I think I talked about it that I was starting on Monday. Started on Monday. I finished yesterday. It was a lot of TV to watch in a small amount of time, but I did it. Um, and now I don't know what I'm going to watch. I feel like I'm starting something new. I do have a couple of books that I have borrowed from the library and I should probably just read those. Um, but sometimes watching TV is nice because I don't have to like use my eyeballs and my brain the way I have to use when I'm reading a book. But maybe I can do both. Maybe I'll find a new TV show that's not like so consuming that I need to watch like every single episode and then I can also read my book that would be a good balance I think and that's pretty much it for today I'm just gonna do that and then go to sleep and then tomorrow is Friday woohoo so I'll catch you tomorrow Friday everyone the end of the week and as I promised I'm going to talk you through all of the patients all of the cases that I saw this week and kind of talk about what I do on a regular basis on a daily basis at my job like I mentioned I'm not really allowed to film at work because of patient confidentiality and obviously I'm busy during work I don't have time to be like actually vlogging um, and I won't go into too many details just because again these are people's personal lives, um, but I will give you a bit of an overview on the types of things that I see on a regular basis. So if my memory serves me right, on Monday, I probably had one patient. It was probably preconception because that's what I tend to do on Mondays. And let me think what it was this week. This week on Monday, I had two patients and one of them did not show up, um, but they had a previous pregnancy with a suspected trisomy. So they had screening done, but not any diagnostic testing from what I can remember. The second case I had on Monday was a couple that had a stillbirth previously. And I have now realized like working in prenatal, there are so many things that can go wrong in a pregnancy. And I honestly like was not aware and I think it was all the time and all of my coworkers, we all talk about this like how were we born without any issues like how are we how were we born healthy how are we born without any issues how are we still healthy today there's so many things that can go wrong like I don't mean to scare people obviously but like I'm a little scared myself so I've had a few of these cases in the last month or so where it's been a history of like a stillbirth like this person's pregnant and then randomly at like 22 weeks or even like 32 weeks 36 weeks even all of a sudden there's a demise and for whatever reason they have to like get the baby out because it's no longer living and so that's what I think my Monday case was about so this pre couple is pregnant again um, but recently they had a demise and there was really no reason why it happened. Um, I'm pretty sure they think it was a placental issue. Um, so something just went awry with the placenta and all of a sudden the baby passed away basically. The fetus passed away. So in our clinic we see a lot of thalassemia cases which are a type of hemoglobin disorders. Um, there's lots of different types but one of the most common ones you might have heard of is sickle cell. Um, sickle cell is a type of hemoglobinopathy, not specifically a thalassemia, but we see a lot of people. We have a very diverse patient population, which is something I absolutely love about my job. And so we see people from literally all over the world. Like there was another um, couple that I met this, met this week that were from a country I have never heard of, like a very small country in West Africa. And every day I'm just blown away by how many different countries there are, how many cultures, how many languages. And I'm always learning new things from people. 
and learning new names and how to pronounce them. Um, it's all very exciting to me. But basically, yes, I met this person. Um, their partner is a carrier for sickle cell um, and they knew that before getting married. A lot of people I've noticed, um, especially in certain African countries, since sickle cell is more predominant in people that have African backgrounds before they get married or um, before they have any children, they tend to have some screening done to say, okay, um, am I a carrier for sickle? Like, am I SA or um, am I AA, which means you're not a carrier, you have the two normal copies of the beta globin and so this couple already knew that um the male in the relationship he was sickle carrier and then the female was not a carrier so they knew all of their children would not have sickle cell disease um, but she uh, potentially could have had um, alpha thalassemia traits so being a carrier for alpha thalassemia which is a different condition similar but different um, in the way that it works and so we were just talking about what that means and basically for their kids together in general if there's a low risk so a lot of times I feel like I really reassure people that you know things are looking a little off on whatever we're seeing but you know if you play it out and you kind of map out what is the genetics look like for their children or their fetus um, it's usually not too concerning and so just organizing testing to look at the DNA to see, okay, are they actually carriers of things like alpha thalassemia, which you can't really tell from like a screening blood test. So that's what I did on Tuesday and just one patient um, on Tuesday as well. And every day this week, I think I've only had one patient. And then on Wednesday, I had a couple, the one that was from the country that I'd never heard of before. Um, it was, it was a really sad story and I won't go into too much detail again because it's very personal, but they had um, a baby last year and the baby passed away after a couple months of life. Um, there were a lot of issues basically going on with the baby and they're pregnant again, so they have no living children. They're pregnant again and in this pregnancy they flagged as high risk for a pretty severe chromosome condition and it was... a I just couldn't believe like what are the odds of this happening it was a it was really sad and um, I did some digging got some records and their first child had a genetic condition but it was a completely random rare genetic condition it's called a de novo event which means it wasn't inherited from the parents um, but just happened completely random or by chance one of her genes had a mutation and it, it it was very severe for the baby, of course, who passed away. And now, again, they're screening as high risk for a completely random chromosome condition as well. Um, so that was really sad. I remember like coming home and thinking about it for hours and just like, it. at the same time, it's like really sad to be witnessing something like this and like watching them struggle so much. But at the, like you're also thinking about how resilient people are and how much they get support from their community and the people around them and how supportive partners are of one another i think that's one of the most beautiful things that the first thing that i realized when i was even in school doing my prenatal rotation is like how close people get when they're in a really difficult situation especially if it's like a married couple um and you can really see the love in between people for the most part like when things get tough like is that person going to be there for you and it's just really nice to be able to see that um from like a third person perspective and so that couple was like i just like feel like i need to like give them the biggest hap the happiness in the world like i would just if if their testing comes back normal which they're having done next week i'm just going to be so happy to give them the good news um and so there was a lot of like logistical stuff i had to do like i had to call different labs i had to call um the patient back and kind of explain what i found from the records and had to review with doctors and it was just a lot going on that day um, but my fingers are really crossed for them obviously my fingers are crossed for all of my couples but this one especially they've been through a lot and i would just i would just be very happy if they got some good news and some good results because i really think they could use it so that was on Wednesday. On Thursday, I did not have any patients. I did admin stuff all day and you you would have noticed that every single day I try to get some patient letters done and every single day I don't because there's so many other things to do like besides seeing patients. There's so much work that goes into just prepping for the case beforehand, 
looking at records, tracking down records, um, going back and forth with providers, like actually looking at the information. Like at this point, I'm like over nine months in, I think, and I feel pretty confident about most of the indications that I see. Like they're pretty average, like the thalassemia stuff I see all the time, the uh, screening tests in pregnancy, like first trimester screen, NIPT, I see all the time. Sometimes things get complicated, like for example, this family history of this rare genetic condition, never heard of it before, had to do a whole review in the literature and things like that. So that was um, something else, but yeah, so pretty much spend my day on Thursday just doing a bunch of administrative tasks. And then today is Friday, and today I had one patient, um, what did I even talk to them about? See, it's all gone in my head. Oh yes, okay. So today I had um, a couple who screened positive for Down syndrome on the first trimester screen, um, and their chance was like one in 18, so about 5%, and talking to them about, okay, what are your options? You can do NIPT to do another screening test that's a little bit more accurate, or you can do an amniocentesis if you wanted to know for sure. Um, and I think one of the best things about just my job in general and it makes me feel really good at the end of it when this happens is when people come in and they're so worried and they're so stressed and you know they've stayed up all night on Google and that's never really a good thing because it's hard to get accurate information on Google and also like you're obviously like emotionally in a fragile place when all these things are happening to you so you're stressed naturally and so a lot of people come to me and they're like literally on edge um, you know as they as they would be as I would expect them to be and then we talk and I give them information and I answer their questions and by the end of it you can actually like feel the tension leave their body and you can like see the relief that's like flooding over them and most people are so appreciative of that of just like taking the time to help them really understand and be able to provide all of the information so that they're making a decision that's best for them in terms of what's comfortable in terms of next steps and so um, that couple today that I met with, uh, they definitely had that feeling and then even last week like I've had a few patients recently that at the end are so emotional they cry about how grateful they are to like have that session with me and that just makes me feel so good and I really feel like not to be cocky but I guess to be cocky that I'm good at my job and some days obviously are like really tough we don't really have I don't really feel that way but other days I'm like this is what I'm meant to be doing. I am making a difference in people's lives. I am really helping people out there. And like, I just get really passionate about what I do. And these are the days that I feel that way. And of course it's really stressful also. Like if you've watched all my other vlogs, like there's a lot of things that, you know, I never expected to have to experience or have to tell people. I give a lot of bad news. Um, in general, but today I got to give a lot of good news like even the test results that I got back were mostly good news um, And people obviously also cry. I make a lot of people cry um, And I would say nobody ever really wants to see me like if they're seeing me There's something concerning either in the family or the pregnancy um, So people are usually very anxious before when they first meet me um, But by the end of it, I hope that most of the time things are okay and even if it's not a situation they wanted to be in like I hope that it would have impacted them, you know, in a better way by having us as part of their care rather than not having us there. That was my very long, I guess, closing of this video. Um, if you're interested in genetic counseling, I really encourage you to watch all of my other videos. I've been now on YouTube for like over a year and a half. And so I have some videos of me actually being a student because I graduated recently and I have some videos where it's me and another grad student who was my roommate at the time, another genetic counseling student, um, and now I am a genetic counselor. So obviously I have videos about that, day in my life, week in my life, that kind of stuff. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more content from me or you have specific things that you want me to film, definitely let me know in the, in the comments below. And I will hope to see you next time in my next video. And thanks so much. Cut, cut up